guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I am going to be spilling my personal beauty secrets today because I will be answering the questions that you guys ask me about my beauty routines the absolute most. I try my best to respond to as many of your messages and comments as possible, but because I just don't have enough time in the day to answer each and every one of you individually, I thought it might be helpful if I start a series where I answer those most commonly asked questions so that they're all in one place and I have a series of videos to direct you guys to for answers. So today I'm going to be answering questions like what procedures I've had done to my face, how I whiten my teeth, how I take care of my hair in the summer, if I shave my face and more. So we have a lot to chat through today. Going to kind of be a bit of a random video, but hopefully really helpful because again, you guys ask me these questions constantly. So I'm excited to finally answer them for you in one video. But before we jump into that, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know how you are doing today. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate you so much for doing that. If you need anything from me, check out my description box below. I have Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, timestamps, discount codes, links to all of the products that I'll be sharing with you today and links to my favorite beauty products of all time. All right, let's dive into whatever this is about to be. Question number one is actually the question that inspired this video because I feel like I just was seeing this over and over and over and I'm like, I just need a video to direct people to. And that question is, how do I whiten my teeth? So I used to use Crest Strips ooh, for years, honestly, throughout high school, throughout college, for a couple years after college. And I did love them. I got really nice results with them. So I will list the white strips that I used in my description box below in case you guys are interested. But I actually have not used them in years because I just got to a point where they were irritating my teeth and my gums so badly that I just could not deal anymore. So instead, I have two whitening products that I use every single day that I've probably been using for close to two years that I absolutely swear by. The first is a whitening toothpaste. It's the Colgate Optic White Renewal High Impact White Toothpaste. It has 3% hydrogen peroxide and it's the only toothpaste I use. I love it. I actually saw that they just came out with a 5% hydrogen peroxide version. So I'm probably going to test that out, switch over to that. But the 3% version is the one that I've been using for the past year and a half to two years. No, I've been using this for much longer than that. It's the combination of these two things. It's been about two years. Love this, love this, love this, highly recommend. The second product is a whitening mouthwash. This is the Crest 3D White Glamorous White Mouthwash. It also has hydrogen peroxide, but I don't think they say how much anywhere on this bottle. So unsure, but adding this to my routine and using it one to two times a day with that toothpaste has made a really big difference in the brightness and whiteness of my smile. So if you are looking to whiten the teeth without the use of white strips, or maybe even a little bit more, check these out. You'll love them. The next most frequently asked question is how I care for my hair in between washes. I have shared many, many times that I am a once a week hair washer. And because of that, my hair is definitely prone to getting tangly in between washes. So I do really like to recondition my hair. I've experimented with a lot of different products and techniques. And what I have found works best for me is to use a combination of a lightweight conditioning mist and a lightweight oil mist. That seems to recondition my hair the best while also being the lightest weight option that is the least likely to add a lot of buildup that just makes my hair feel kind of sticky and heavy. So you may remember that I have recommended serums or lotions or creams in previous videos, and I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. It's just that I noticed a lot of them did end up making my hair feel kind of weird. That was really just a personal preference thing. I prefer the way that my hair feels throughout the week with lighter weight sprays like this. So. You guys know my trusty Pureology Color Fanatic Multitasking Leave-In Spray is my favorite leave-in conditioning spray of all time. It's incredible. It is lightweight enough for me to use for midweek reconditioning, but it is so, so amazing at detangling the hair. I actually just repurchased this. I hadn't used it in months because I was testing out other things and I was like, I feel like I missed this, but now I can't remember how much. Like. You know those products that you've just loved for the longest time that you kind of step away from for a while and you're like, was I making that a bigger deal than it was? 
I'm happy to report that I wasn't. After using this, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I actually can't live without this. I will never go without this again unless I find something better. So freaking love this, would highly recommend. It's also great for just after wash day. Nothing new to report for oil mists either. I've recommended both of these products so many times and I do try to look for others from different brands to have variety, see if there's something better, but it's really hard to find oil mists. So I still have not found one that I like better than these. First is the Alterna Caviar Anti-Aging Smoothing Anti-Frizz Dry Oil Mist. So nice, but if you want one that is a little bit more affordable, the Nature Lab Tokyo Perfect Shine Oil Mist is a really good one as well. So hopefully that's helpful. I know that that's not a super specific detailed step-by-step -step answer, but that's because I don't have a super specific detailed step-by-step -step process that I follow each week. I really just pick and choose products and frequency of use depending on how my hair looks and feels. So that would be my top recommendation. We obviously all have different hair types and textures and needs. So what works well for me is not always going to be what works well for you. Do some experimentation to figure figure out the products that do sit well in your hair and do help to condition and detangle to the level that you need. The next question is what is actually my favorite self tanner that I use the most? And if you keep up with my self tan content, you know that I have tested out so many self tanners at this point. I have three self tan showdowns. I have videos where I'm reviewing multiple self tanners from specific brands. I have a self tan drop showdown. So I of course will list all those videos below if you have not seen all of them, but I've tested so many self tanners that I understand why a lot of you are like, okay, but what's your actual favorite? What's the best one? And I have three. The reason why I have three is they are all a little bit different. So let me explain. The first is the Bali Body One Hour Express Self Tan Mousse. This does have a color guide. So if I you know, I'm in a situation where I can just be in my apartment, I don't have to go outside, I can wear a color guide, then this is typically what I will reach for because it is beautiful. It dries down fully, so even though it does have that color, it's not sticky, it's not gonna transfer onto other things, and I only have to wear this for about four to five hours to get full depth of color, which is amazing, and a big reason why I reach for this over others that I have to leave on for like 10 to 12 hours. That's just so long, so, any self tanner that I can wear for less time is going to get brownie points in my book, but the biggest reason why this is a favorite of mine is because of how the color looks. It gets perfectly dark, it's not too much, and it just, I think, looks the most natural on me out of any self tanner that I've ever tried. It's not orange, it really is beautiful. So if you're okay with a color guide and just looking for such nice, gorgeous, naturally tan looking skin, I would recommend trying this one out. If I don't want a mousse that has a color guide, I will go for the Tanologist Express Tan Self Tan Mousse in Dark. I do have to leave this on for eight hours to get full depth of color, but because it doesn't have a color guide, that's something that's not as big a deal to me, like a really dark color guide for 10 to 12 hours no ma'am. And the color is also super pretty with this one. It gets very dark. It's just a little bit more orange. So I think you get a little bit of a less natural looking result, even though I don't think that this looks like oh my gosh, a crazy orange self tanner and look super fake. It still is really, really pretty. It's just that I feel Bali body is a little better. So love this one too. But for my third favorite, if I don't want to apply a mousse at all and I just want to mix drops into a lotion, which is something that I've been really loving lately, then I will also use Tanologist, but their face and body self tan drops in dark. This product is freaking amazing. I am obsessed with the tan that I get with these drops. I do definitely use a lot to get a really, really dark tan, but I have been wearing this in a lot of my recent videos and I've been noticing a ton of comments from you guys complimenting my tan, asking what tan it is, and it has been these drops. I also just think there's something so convenient about putting drops into a lotion and then getting tan skin eight hours later. So I love these. Every time I use them, I'm like, why would I ever use a mousse again? Highly recommend. And that's a nice segue into the next question that I'm asked constantly because I self tan. So many of you want to know how I self tan my face. And the answer is I don't. So when I first stopped applying self tanner to my face, it was because I couldn't find one that was fragrance and essential oil free that didn't irritate my skin. But now there are options for facial self tanners that are free of those ingredients, which is awesome. So I'll list one below that I know off the top of my head. It's the Bondi Sands 
pure self tan drops. I think that's what it's called, the white bottle. That's a really nice option, but I still don't tan my face. And the reason for that is because I use tretinoin every single night and tretinoin is an ingredient that causes self tan to fade very quickly. So while I definitely be open to testing out some of those self tanners on my face, I just feel like it's not worth the hassle knowing that tretinoin is going to make that disappear within like one to two days. So what I do now to match the skin tone of my face to the tan on my body, which I definitely need to do because I have very fair skin naturally, is either just use makeup to match, or if I'm not wearing makeup, I will use a tinted sunscreen. I'll list some tinted sunscreens that I love below that I think do a good job of balancing out my skin tone because they have a little bit more coverage. But my go-to is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face shield matte. I disagree with the matte claim here. I don't think this looks matte on the skin at all. I think it has more of a glowy finish, but it's really pretty and it's one that has lighter to medium coverage. So it does a really nice job of evening out my skin tone versus those options that are tinted, but super, super sheer. And you can still see my ghostly complexion through them. So that one's great. I'll list a couple other options below, like their flex sunscreens, which will actually give you up to full coverage, just depending on what you're looking for. I'll add some notes to the description box for you. All right, next question, which is also a nice segue, is how I reapply sunscreen over makeup. And to be totally honest, I rarely find myself in a situation where I need to do that because I'm self-employed and I work from home. I almost never have makeup on during the week unless I am sitting here filming. And then when I'm done filming, I take my makeup off and put sunscreen on. But I know that's not helpful at all. And I definitely have reapplied sunscreen over makeup before. So I will share a couple products slash methods that are my personal favorite. The best case scenario is to apply a sunscreen lotion over your makeup because that's going to give you the most even and consistent coverage. However, however, don't worry. I know that for those of you that wear a full face of makeup, liquid and cream products, that putting a sunscreen lotion on top of that is disgusting. It feels gross. It looks gross. It messes up your makeup. No. So I think the next best option is to start off with a sunscreen setting spray or mist. This one from Supergoop is really nice. It's called their Resetting Refreshing Mist. It's an SPF 40 and it's water resistant for up to 40 minutes. It's very lightweight, so it doesn't feel heavy or sticky or greasy on the skin. It doesn't make your skin look overly shiny and it doesn't mess up your makeup, which is the goal here. But because you're less likely to actually apply enough of this sunscreen to get that labeled SPF protection, you'll want to make sure that you're really meticulous with application. Go in sections on the face, move slowly, apply multiple layers to make sure that you're actually getting that SPF 40. Then on top of that, I would recommend adding some insurance on top of that with a sunscreen setting powder. And this is also obviously a really nice way to tone down the look of oils if you do have really oily skin or if you happen to be wearing products that make your skin look shiny. My go-to for sunscreen powders are the Color Science sunscreen powders. This one is the Sun Forgettable Total Protection Brush on shield. It's an SPF 50. It's water resistant for up to 80 minutes. But what I love about color science is that they have quite a few different options for finishes and shades in these powders, which is very difficult to find from other brands when it comes to a powder sunscreen or any sunscreen, let's be honest. So I'll list some of my favorite sunscreen powders from color science below, but it is definitely a very pricey product. So if that price point is just not an option for you, one that is more affordable is the Derma E Essential Sun Protect mineral powder SPF. It is only an SPF 30 instead of SPF 50, but totally get it if that's too expensive. So that is another one that is really nice that I will list below for you. The next question is how I use copper peptides with retinoids in my skincare routine. So as many of you know, I've been using the Ordinary's Buffet Plus Copper Peptides for months at this point. I'm obsessed with this product. I keep recommending it because I feel like I've seen such amazing results as far as the clarity and glowiness of my skin. It's just it's so good. But as many of you also know, I also use tretinoin every single day. And in order to maximize efficacy of this product, The Ordinary actually advises against using it in the same routine as strong acids and antioxidants, which would include things like tretinoin. So in order to avoid any potential issues with efficacy and compatibility of ingredients, I use copper peptides every morning and tretinoin every night. So at alternate times of day, and then I don't have to worry about it. If you'd like to hear more about this product and see my 
results and using an entire bottle for the first time, I'll list my video on it below along with my morning and nighttime skincare routines so that you can see how I incorporate both of those products. The next question is very seasonally appropriate, so I thought I would put it in this video, and it is what is my favorite body sunscreen? My favorite body sunscreen of all time is the Banana Boat Light as Air Weightless Protection SPF 50. As you can see, I just bought a new one because I just used an entire bottle. It's just so, so nice because while it is a lotion that feels nice and hydrating and a little bit moisturizing, it absorbs and dries down so quickly and it has zero greasy residue whatsoever. It's definitely the most traceless body sunscreen that I've ever used in that sense. So I freaking love this. If you're able to get your hands on it, I would highly recommend trying it out. But for some reason, it does seem to be more difficult to find these days. I don't know if they're discontinuing it or why that is, but I can't seem to find this in stores anymore. So I have another option for you. And that is the Sunbum Premium Moisturizing Sunscreen Lotion. It's also an SPF 50 and is also really, really nice. It smells amazing, like fresh bananas, very nice summertime scent. It is something that I would still consider to be non-greasy, but when I compare it to Banana Boat, I'm like, there's a tiny bit more residue than that one, which is why Banana Boat is still my favorite, but this really is a close second. It's such a nice body sunscreen. However, I have a few more recommendations because I have been super into adding glow boosting sunscreens on like my collarbone, my chest, what, decollete area? I never know if I'm saying that word right. Decollete. Is that real? Decolletage. So for that area of my body, I have been obsessed with adding glow boosting sunscreens. One that I really love for that purpose is the Supergoop Glow Screen. They actually make this in a body version, so it's a bigger bottle. I did not know that until they sent this to me in PR. And this is one that is just really nice and pearly and iridescent, but it also has a really natural dry down. So it's not an oily look. You know what I mean? A couple of these are, but in a good way. This just gives you that luminous look to the skin. It is beautiful. I'm freaking obsessed, so I love that. But they also have an oil mist. So this is the Super Goop Glow Oil. This is an SPF 50. I forgot to say this is an SPF 40. Did I forget to say that? I don't know if I said that. And this is something that doesn't have that pearly iridescent look. Instead, it just like juices up your skin. Oh my gosh, it's really good. But for a combination of those two finishes, the Kopari Sun Shield Body Glow SPF 50 is amazing. It's like a hybrid between a gel and an oil, so it feels really nice to apply and it definitely gives you that really juicy, glossy look to the skin. The glow is insane, but it also has some pigment in there that gives you a little bit of that luminous pearly finish as well. Not as much as the glow screen. Again, it's just kind of like a mix of those two things. So freaking good. I just love juicy, glowy skin. Can you guys tell? The next question is also very seasonally appropriate and it is how I care for my hair in the summer or on vacation. And this is something that I've done a lot of research on. So I recently posted an entire video with all of my tips and tricks that I will list below. But if I had to share one tip from that video, it would be that I always wash my hair with shampoo after I get it wet in a pool in the ocean, in a lake, in any body of water like that. That's not my own shower. And the reason why I do that is because there are just a lot of minerals and chemicals and pollutants in bodies of water like that that can damage the hair if left sitting on the hair. So as much as I don't love getting my hair wet too often, I would rather re-wet it to wash those things out of my hair than let my hair dry with them sitting in it. No, thank you. The second to last question is if I shave or dermaplane my face. And I feel like whenever I see this question, it is in relation to how smooth my skin looks. I'll see a lot of things like, how is your skin so smooth? Do you shave it? Do you dermaplane it? What do you do? And the answer is no. I've never shaved my face. I've never used a dermaplaning tool. Even though now that I think of it, I definitely have a little dermaplaning kit in my apartment somewhere. I should whip that out because I would definitely test it out in a video if you guys are interested in seeing that, but I have never done that before and it's definitely not what makes my skin so smooth. I think tools like that can definitely be helpful, but at the end of the day, if you have a ton of texture, it's not going to get rid of that. What will help to get rid of intense texture like that 
is something like tretinoin, which is 100% what I attribute to the smoothness of my skin. So tretinoin, chemical exfoliants like glycolic acid, that's what I would recommend for ultra smooth baby soft skin. And the final question is not something I see all that often on YouTube, but I do see comments all the time whenever I post a video showing what my skin looks like that suggests that I've obviously had work done and that I must get Botox or other injectables because skin doesn't look like that without them. And I'm happy to report that skin absolutely can look like that without any sort of procedure or treatment because I do not get anything done to my face. This is all natural. I mean, unless we wanna count my one fake tooth, my one veneer. <laughs> I have gotten filler and Botox one time before in my life, but neither of those things were done for the purpose of anti-aging or for my skin. So I actually set up an appointment for myself, I think this was like four years ago now, to get Kybella because I hated the way that my side profile looked. I felt like it looked like I had a double chin. I was like, I wanna get rid of it. Based on my research, I thought that that would fix it. But when I got to the appointment, the nurse was like, Sweetie, no, you don't have a double chin. It's not fat under your chin. You just have a receding chin. I was like, nice. So she basically advised against me getting Kybella. She's like, it's expensive, it hurts. There's downtime because you have a lot of swelling. A lot of people have to get multiple rounds of it. So you don't wanna do all of that to then have no results. That would suck. So I was like, agreed, let's not do it. And instead what she recommended was to add filler in my jawline and Botox in my chin to help to relax my chin a little bit to create the illusion of a longer chin jawline region. I don't know why I said that like that, but she did say I could add filler to my chin. It just would take a lot of filler to do that and would be really expensive. So she was like, let's just start off with this. And then if you wanna fill your chin later, you can do that. So I really liked that, that she recommended a more kind of what's the word? Cautious, I guess, approach to starting out. And I did really love the results that I got. I do think it made a difference, but at the end of the day, I started to notice what she said. Like the problem is not my jaw. The thing I don't love about my side profile is just how my chin sits. So I feel like really the only thing that would fix it is like a chin implant, which I just don't see myself doing. <laughs> so that was my one and only experience with both filler and Botox. I haven't gotten either of those things done since. So it's been like four years and I don't ever plan to get filler in my face again, but I definitely can see myself getting Botox in the future. I just don't have plans to quite yet. All right, those are all the questions that I had planned for today's video. So we are going to wrap it up here. I hope that this was helpful for you guys and hope it answered a lot of the things that you guys have been curious about as it relates to my beauty routine. So if you want me to make this an ongoing series, let me know in the comments below and leave any other questions that you have for me that you would like me to address in future videos. Anything goes. And if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for your support and doing all of those things. It means the world. Thank you guys for continuing to watch my videos. I love you so freaking much. Stay tuned for my next one because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.